Hi everybody, this is Father Moki Hino from Good Shepherd Church. Today is Wednesday, September 9th, and it's a little bit later in the day than uh, we normally record uh, this video message. Uh, and that's because I locked myself out of the office earlier this afternoon, and so here we are, we're catching up. The, um, the thing that's interesting about uh, recording at this time of day is there don't seem to be any chickens in the yard but there are definitely a lot of them over by the memorial garden and I'm sure that you can hear them piping in from time to time. So anyhow, uh, before I begin to uh, give you all the news of the week, I, I wanted to let you know that I'm going to talk about forgiveness in the sermon this coming Sunday. And as you know, we pre-record those services. So um, there was something that I wanted to share with you about forgiveness and it's a uh, it's a reading, and so because I forgot in the sermon and I don't want to go back and re-record it, I'll, <laughs> I'll share it with you now. This is from a retreat leader whose name is Marjorie Thompson, and she says, To forgive is to make a conscious choice to release the person who has wounded us from the sentence of our judgment, however justified that judgment may be. It presents a choice to leave behind our resentment and desire for retribution, however fair such punishment may seem. Forgiveness involves excusing persons from the punitive consequences they deserve because of their behavior. The behavior remains condemned, but the offender is released from its effects as far as the forgiver is concerned. Forgiveness means the power of the original's wounds power to hold us trapped is broken. So just some food for thought uh, as you uh, prepare and ready yourselves for the wonderful 19-minute sermon you're going to hear uh, this Sunday. I apologize to all of you in advance, but I think it'll hold everyone's attention for the duration. So hang in there with me when you tune in on Sunday. Uh, I would like to say a very, very, very deep thanks to everyone who made our Gregorio Aglipai service possible. Uh, too many people to thank by name, but it really, really did please me because liturgy, the root of the word liturgy is liturgia, and it means the work of the people. So it's not just me doing the liturgy, it's everybody that was involved, and uh, we had fabulous participation. And I will let you know that on Monday morning when I looked on Facebook, there were 635 views of our service, and that doesn't even factor an account, into account Zoom or YouTube and 31 people had shared the service on, uh, on their personal Facebook pages, uh, and including Bishop Fitzpatrick, who put it up on the diocesan website. So uh, I thought that was a really wonderful thing. So thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Uh, coming up, we do plan to uh, have uh, dedicate one Sunday to uh, St. Michael. That'll be the last Sunday of September and I'm going to work with Keiko Akana on how to honor the uh, police officers uh, that Sunday uh, because St. Michael is the patron saint of police officers as well as grocers, I'm told. So that's an interesting combination. Um, for then the following Sunday, which will be the first Sunday in October, uh, we would like to bless the animals. And so uh, we have a, a way to, to do that, and it'll simply be you hold your animal and uh, you, you say, this is so-and-so. You introduce your pet very briefly, and you say, thanks be to God. And as you're doing that, I will bless each animal that comes up on the, on the screen that's recorded. So if we could have those by October 16th, which is, uh, no, 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 no. Um, Anyway, there's a day that we need that by, and I'll tell you next week, and I will demonstrate uh, how to do the video at that time. Uh, also, I would like to let you know that we have done very well in our building fund, uh, and to, to date we have collected $1,900, which is phenomenal, so thank you very, very much to those who have contributed and to those who will uh, contribute. I'm very, very pleased with the outcome of that uh, particular effort. 
Uh, we will have a service for All Saints, which will be the first Sunday of November. And that was the October 16th deadline that I had in mind. If you uh, have relatives that you would like to have acknowledged during the service, uh, please send those names to Cora by Friday, October 16th. And we will scroll the names uh, during the entirety of the virtual service uh, that day. Also, um, if you have a loved one uh, that you would like to have remembered with a photograph, uh, please scan the photo and email it to either Cora or me and or if you have trouble with that you can bring the photo into the office and we can scan it here for you. Uh, we'll have a musical tribute to, uh, to those who have gone before and that's especially poignant for me because as many of you know I lost my grandmother in May. So um, please please remember that and we would also like to have the photo by October the 16th, which is a Friday. Um, and then coming up, we, we uh, will begin some kind of stewardship pledge drive, uh, preparing for that in the month of October. So just to, to ready yourselves and to prayerfully consider uh, what your giving to the church uh, might be for the calendar year of 2021. It's uh, really important to, to get that in for our budgeting purposes. We'll probably be building the budget and finalizing it uh, in December. So uh, please, please bear that in mind. I, I would like to let you know that over the past week, um, I did uh, go down to the Kaohana kitchen and found uh, Louise, Aloy's sisters, Jackie's daughters there uh, uh, helping out and it was delightful to, to meet with them. I also have called on a number of you uh, over the past week uh, in your homes and I, I, I want to say that I'm really really grateful for the way you open up your homes to me and welcome me and I, I get I feel very touched by that and I really really appreciate it so if any of you uh, would like uh, me to bring communion to you please let me know by texting me emailing me or calling the office and I'll be happy to make arrangements to to do that I've had a ton of zoom meetings this week uh, diocesan as well as uh, zoom meetings here including a meeting of the worship committee which was very lively and uh, joyful next week um, I will have two more zoom meetings one will be the vestry uh, that will be on Tuesday evening and then we'll get the minutes and the financials out to you right after that and I also have a diocesan council meeting not this week Saturday but uh, the following Saturday uh, please please remember to uh, join in for Compline uh, led by our youth here at Good Shepherd. Uh, you can go on the Good Shepherd Facebook page and avail yourself of that service. Uh, in fact, I'm going to dash home uh, from here and partake of that. And uh, it's just delightful the way that the youth get together and put that on for us. And then the, the music is also really wonderful. So uh, please consider joining us for that. And then bear in mind that uh, Father Jar Pasalo uh, who is now the, the uh, diocesan youth coordinator is offering Compline at 8 o'clock on Thursdays so as not to compete with our Compline. Uh, that's 8 o'clock p.m. on Thursdays and you can find him on the diocesan website and if a link is identified to me I'll share that link on the Good Shepherd uh, uh, Facebook page as well if I, if, if I can find it. Um, finally uh, I would like to announce that the chicken of the week is Harriet, and Harriet is a remarkable chicken. Uh, earlier, earlier today there were five roosters, and uh, one rooster had taken a McDonald's french fry, and uh, then uh, four more roosters were fighting with that one rooster over the french fry and while they were fighting Harriet snuck in there and she grabbed the french fry out of the rooster's mouth they chased her all around the courtyard here and then she escaped out underneath the gate and left the five roosters in a lurch so yay Harriet way to go and you deserve to be the chicken of the week Harriet we are so proud of you 
Uh, I ask your uh, prayers uh, this week, uh, continued prayers for a quick and speedy resolution to the uh, COVID pandemic. And also, uh, I realize that there are less than 60 days uh, before our national election. And, and I ask that we hold uh, that election in prayers with, with the uh, prayer uh, to God that thy will be done. Thy will be done, as we say in the Lord's Prayer. So please keep those two things, uh, especially in your intentions as you offer up prayers during the course of the week. And then for, uh, for this particular uh, session, I would uh, like to close with a prayer from a book that I have called uh, Celtic Treasure, uh, written by a gentleman named John Philip Newell. And uh, I found this prayer especially beautiful. So with that, let us pray. In the silence of our hearts or in spoken words, let us give thanks for the gift of this day and pray for the life of the world. Hope and fear, laughter and tears have been part of our journey. Joy and pain, longing and doubt meet on the pathway. Often we do not believe, O God, and sometimes we doubt that your promises can be true. Grant us and our world the freedom to laugh, the courage to cry, the heart to be open, and the faith to believe. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you on Sunday.